Now in this class, we're mostly gonna be talking about medically relevant microbes. But remember, the majority of microbes, like more than 99% of all microbes are harmless, not gonna cause disease. In fact, your body is covered with more bacteria than actual human cells. In and on your body, you have what's called the normal flora. I usually call it normal flora, but you might also see normal microbiota. These are basically the good microbes, the consortia of microbes that are in and on your body. And without them, a lot could go wrong. Like you have microbes coating your skin that are helping prevent pathogens from getting in. You have tons of bacteria in your gut that are helping you to digest your food and provide you vitamins and so forth. When a microbe causes disease or harms you, we typically will call it a parasite. So a parasite lives in or on your body and harms you in some way. You are the host, meaning you are the home of that parasite. Now typically when we say parasite, we're talking about one of the eukaryotic microbes. Like for example, we're talking about a fungus, like a yeast infection. We're talking about a protozoa, or we're talking about a, one of those parasitic worms, helminths. So parasitology is the study of parasites, the study of fungus, protozoa, and helminth diseases. Another word you're going to see the most is, and during this semester is pathogens. A pathogen is similar to a parasite in that it causes harm or causes disease. And typically pathogen we use for bacteria that cause disease or viruses. Pathogen is a disease causing bacteria or virus. And this is by far the biggest area of, in this course because a lot of serious diseases are caused by bacteria or viruses. To date, we know of nearly 2,000 different microbes that cause disease. And we know that there's a lot of infections worldwide and a lot of deaths due to pathogens. A couple of other terms I wanna talk about. An emerging disease is a new, a newly discovered disease. For example, and an example of an emerging disease is HIV. HIV is a virus and it can lead to uh, what's known as AIDS. And HIV was only really discovered in the 1980s, so it's relatively new. And because it's a new virus, we see it spreading across the globe. So an emerging disease is one that can spread because people traveling to different countries, we don't have a reliable vaccine or a cure for it, so it's relatively new. Some other examples of emerging diseases. Flu is definitely an emerging disease. Every time you go on to a news source, you hear about how there's more and more cases of flu popping up and it's still causing a lot of deaths per year. HIV, like I said, an emerging disease. Malaria, definitely something an emerging disease. Another type of disease could be a re-emerging disease. This is something that we thought we had eradicated. We had a vaccine or we started cleaning a water supply, things like that. So we thought it was gone, but it makes a comeback. Usually a disease would reemerge, maybe because we had a vaccine, maybe something comes up on the news and not enough people are getting vaccinated anymore and we see it popping up again. So not enough people are getting vaccinated. For example, measles. I mean, measles is something we thought, who gets measles now, you know? We all have, we have vaccines for measles. But if you look at the news, you're going to see that even here in the United States, all of a sudden measles is coming back. Cases of measles are popping up. So measles is an example of a re-emerging disease. And this could happen usually due to people stop vaccinating their children. Here in the United States and in other high income countries, we do have deaths due to infectious diseases, diseases that can spread person to person, but we have a lot of standard precautions that we take so we don't get as many deaths maybe as somewhere in a low income country where they have much higher rates of deaths due to infectious disease. 
So for example, we have vaccines as we talked about. Okay, vaccines are used to prevent 